Hey guys, it's Ryan Bridge Bugman, and look, today we're gonna do something very cool. Um, look, if I had to pick my favorite caterpillar of all time, it would be the regal moth caterpillar, also known as the hickory horn devil. You know what, they're called that for a reason. Check it out. They're gonna hatch out from an egg as a tiny little brown caterpillar, and they're gonna morph into this crazy cool turquoise color behemoth with bright, terrifying, horns on the top and black spines going all the way down the length of the body. These are the coolest, man. Look, I'm gonna take you guys through the process of rearing the hickory horn devil. We're gonna, we're gonna walk through how to rear regal moths today. Finding regal moths takes two parts timing, one part skill, and about 10 parts luck. In Pennsylvania where I live, the adult moths are gonna start flying around the first week of July, and then they're gonna peak in mid-July. That's your best chance to attract them to lights. Attracting a female regal moth is like the holy grail quest for people like me who really enjoy rearing these awesome insects. Trust in nature, because you're gonna be likely to see one, but only a few regal moths are gonna be flying by mid-August. So if you miss them, you know, you can always contact some reputable breeder and buy some eggs or pupa. Another option is scouring the forest floor in search of the caterpillar droppings. These things are huge. They're like rabbit pellets. That's another good way to try and luck into some regal larvae. All right, guys, another moth I want to show you uh, is the regal moths. These are beautiful moths native to the, to the United States. Uh, the the larva is the hickory horned devil, which is our largest caterpillar in the United States. Huge, awesome larva, and the moths are absolutely gorgeous. The regal moths are going to pupate under the ground, and then they're going to come up out of the ground anywhere from you know mid June all the way through probably the end of July. These are some of uh, are probably more unique moths as well. Again, it's a Saturnid, so no mouth on the adult, doesn't feed, doesn't do anything. The only purpose for even having these beautiful wings is to go out and locate mates. This is a big female. So we're gonna be putting her out tonight. Hopefully she'll be calling for males. Who knows, maybe we'll get a mate, get a bunch of really cool caterpillars. The regal moths. Female moths push out a pheromone. It's like a perfume. Male moths are gonna use their antenna to detect the scent and they're gonna track her through the darkness, often from several miles away. Once mated, the female can lay up to about 350 eggs and then she's gonna die. Her mission is complete. The males, well, they live on for about another week or so. Eventually, they're gonna to succumb to predators or the weather, but everything is built to survive one more day. The eggs are laid and they will darken up after about seven to 10 days. Then they're gonna hatch and that is where my mission begins. Okay, check this out. New regal moth larvae are surprisingly small considering how big they're gonna grow. Uh, they're gonna feed mainly on walnut, maybe sweet gum. Down south, they're probably gonna hit persimmon. So keep an eye on that if you live down there. Hickory, black gum, sumac, those are all the good choices for food plant. I prefer to keep mine on walnut, and I also like to keep all my first instar larvae safely contained uh, until they reach at least a second instar. I found that I have a lot of difficulty keeping them alive without some daily TLC. Okay, so once the caterpillars reach second instar, I'm gonna pull them in, put them into bags on trees. We call those sleeves. This allows for a more natural environment. It allows the elements to get to the caterpillars, and that is really what nature wants. It's gonna energize the caterpillars. It's gonna speed them up. At first, I'll keep 15 to 20 larvae per sleeve. Then I'll break them down about every three or four days, and then I'm gonna use additional sleeves and reduce the amount of larvae in each bag. Do that every three or four days. Without the sleeves, wheel bugs, soldier bugs, tacking and flies, these, all these things would be coming in, they decimate the entire brood. Nature allows that to happen. That's natural. So we beat the odds by using the sleeves. At times I'm forced to actually double sleeve the larva in order to fend off these same predators. 
third instar larvae are going to slightly morph. They're going to sprout larger horns and thicker bodies. Unless they're paused for a molt, these larvae never stop eating. Okay, here's where things start getting fun. The fourth instar larvae are going to morph even more. They're going to display more color contrast. They're going to even have larger horns. Check that out. At this point, they're putting on considerable weight and they're going to double in size. Upon reaching fifth instar, regal larvae begin to live up to their name. Check it out, man. They will morph into more colors. They're, again, they're going to double in size and they're going to spend considerably more time in the fifth instar than the previous four. And within a week, they're going to shift from a gray brown to an olive green and eventually to a bright green coloration. And check out those horns, man. The horns are going to double in size as well and turn a brilliant bright red color. This is when these caterpillars really turn on and start getting awesome. Okay, so I'm going to keep the caterpillars in the sleeves until they mature and until they finish out eating and they blew out. And what that means is they stop eating, they go into a wandering phase and they turn blue. And judging by this bag, there's probably a blue one in there because it looks just, there's a little too much food in there. So I'm guessing we got at least one blue one in here. So let's go check this out. Let's go find out what we got. Okay, so as I expected, I just I just cracked open the first bag and I've got a, what I call a bluey. Um, when the regal caterpillars are getting, you know, they're looking for a place to pupate, they, they go from green to turquoise blue, absolutely beautiful. And they wander for a while until they finally figure out where they wanna burrow in and that's where they'll pupate. Well, in these bags, they'll actually walk the branch back to the back where it's tied off and they'll usually sit right where the tie off is. So as I open these bags, I have to be careful. And I open this one and check this out. I'll run around for you. Check this guy out. Let's see if I can get him out of here. <laughs> you gotta love a big old blue caterpillar. There it is. Nice. These are what they look like, all right? They're gonna go from green to this turquoise blue, beautiful caterpillars. And they'll literally wander for maybe a day or two sometimes until they find a suitable spot and they'll burrow into the ground or they'll go under debris or substrate. And that is when it gets fun because uh, that's when the, they go and pupate and then the waiting game begins for the adults for next year. Super uber cool. All right, there's probably at least one more larva in this bag, so I'm gonna go in and check this bag, see what else we got. All right, so it took me a minute to find this guy. Turns out he was right in front of me. There he is. A nice big fifth end star. Uh, obviously, he hasn't blued out yet, so he's not wandering yet, which is cool, but there's plenty of nice food in here still for him. Or her. But how cool are they? All right, that's a great sign. There's still a good fresh one in there. And we're moving on to the next bag. All right, I gotta tie this one off. We'll move to the next bag. Okay, so second bag is open. I got another big blue in this one too. So let me get this turn for you. We're gonna go in. Now this one kind of gave it away because I noticed there was a bunch of black stuff in the bottom of the bag. That's where he blew his gut. Where'd he go? I know he's in here where he blew his gut and there he is nice big look at that caterpillar in there how weird is it to see a turquoise blue caterpillar he was all the way at the front end of the bag here I'll lay him right there you can get a good look at him how weird is it to see turquoise blue caterpillars <sighs> Very, very cool. All right, so we pull him out. We're gonna put him in the bag with the other one. We'll take him back and we'll put him into a big bucket with some dirt. And uh, these will burrow down into that dirt and pupate and then I'll house them over the winter. So one more going back to headquarters. 
Okay, new bag and more caterpillars. <laughs> Every bag is like Christmas, man. Uh, Cause there's one there and I think I saw another, yep, there he is. There's another one back here. So there's the two, both nice big fifth instar larva. A lot of good food in here, so we're gonna leave those in. I'm gonna leave this bag open for a minute and I wanna see what else is going on in these other bags and I may move one of these to one of the other bags just to give them some more room. So very cool stuff. Check this one out. This one's gonna be a little confusing to some people because one, he's blue, but look, look at the horns, okay? Look at the horns. He's blue, but he doesn't even have red horns. Every now and then, I have larvae that are blue with black horns, and they blew up way ahead of schedule. This guy isn't done eating yet. I just pulled him out of the out of the the bag. He was actually eating. Normally, to have that look, he would have to. He would probably be crawling and creeping and wandering. He'd be in wander phase. But he's not, man. He's a blue caterpillar with those cool black horns. And that makes him a little bit unusual and a little bit cool all at the same time. So he's going to go back in the bag where he's going to have more to eat. And then probably in another day or two when I come down here, he'll be a little bit bigger. Because he's not even all that big. He's still, pretty, he's still pretty small. He's probably got another two inches to go. So he's got a little growing. Maybe another three or four days He'll be ready. He'll be done cooking. So back in the bag with him. Okay, so uh, I've jumped the bag. There was there was a smaller one in the one bag. Um, I'll show you him in a little bit. I pulled him and set him aside because I want to show you him a little bit. Here's a classic example in this particular bag um, of what happens when they blew up and they start to wander. Right here, oh, oh, let me tell you, right here at the tie-off. This tie-off right here, that keeps them from wandering up the branch, but guess what? There's a caterpillar, <laughs> a big blue caterpillar right here, hiding in amongst that. So I'm gonna have to carefully untie this and get to him, because he is ready to go underground. Pretty cool stuff. And then there should be one more in this bag yet as well. We'll go looking. And here he is, and he has been He's been in wandering phase for a little while now. He's he's actually, good Lord, he's almost pre-pupa until he'll turn white just before he goes into pupa. But he is still, he's pretty little considering how big he was the other day when I was here. But this is what they do. They, sh they curl up and they get really kind of small just before they go into pupa. Kind of cool stuff. So he'll go in the bag and he'll come back to the headquarters as well. And we're gonna give him a home in some dirt and he is gonna be very happy. Now there's still one more in here because I already saw that one. I'll show you that one in a minute. And there is the other one. I've actually pulled him to the back of the bag and reset the bag to put a little more fresh food in the bag for this guy. He doesn't have much longer to go. He doesn't have too much longer to go, but but boy, what a nice one here. We'll see if we can get him out here so you can see him better. Check. Oh, these fifth instar caterpillars are so nice. Just awesome. Totally awesome caterpillars. I love these caterpillars, man. Largest caterpillars in the US and I got him. Um, that's just how I roll, man. All right, we're gonna just keep doing this. What you're looking at are three of the largest types of caterpillars in the country. There's three hickory horn devils right here, here, and here. This one, this one gets a little weird because I'm not sure why he's so little, but he is. There we go. That's 
that's like a third, barely fourth instar caterpillar, I think. And that one weirds me out a little bit because I'm beginning to wonder if he was on the tree when I bagged it. He may not be one of mine. He's barely, he's barely in, he's barely, you know, fourth instar. And if he is fourth instar, then he's definitely a dwarf. So that'll be interesting to see if he can make it through. But I'm going to bag him back up, treat him just like all the rest, let him do his thing. Now, as I said before, I'm going to take the wandering blueies and I'm going to give them some dirt to play in. I use buckets, maybe containers, and I'm going to allow for at least 10 inches of soil. Damp peat moss works best, and the larvae are going to spend about two or three days wandering within this bucket. And even though they're going to go underground, I'm still going to dig them up after in a few days and relocate them into a shallow tote. And that's where they'll finish off the process. Just prior to molting into the pupa, the larva will turn white. Check it out. It's critical not to disturb them at this point. Upon shedding their final molt into pupa, they're going to turn a bright green. Check this out. This only lasts for a short time as the pupal shell is going to begin to harden real quick and then it morphs into the darker chocolate hard shell that it's going to eventually be. From this point, storing the pupa for overwinter is pretty easy. I limit the amount of moisture within the storage tote and I keep a close eye on the pupa to make sure they're not collecting mold or mildew from the peat moss. I know some breeders who will actually give their pupa a bleach water bath for a few minutes and then they polish them off to a, like a real nice shine. Every ounce of TLC is going to help keep these things alive. And if everything goes well, next July, I'm going to have new regal moths emerging and the process begins all over again. My program audiences love both the moth and the caterpillars and it's very easy to understand why. So there you have it, guys. I'll say it again. What's not to love about these awesome and amazing caterpillars? The hickory horn devil, the largest caterpillar in the U.S., and it remains my all-time favorite caterpillar. And look, man, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me down here hanging with my caterpillars every day. So look, man, thanks for hanging out. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this. Most of all, hickory horn devils, man. What is not to love about those guys? All right, guys, have a great day. We'll catch you later. Ryan a bug, man. Be well, be safe and let's all be kind. It's an angry world out there. See ya.